the top 10 things that I hate on YouTube. This doesn't mean that you're going to hate them, but these are the things I really, really detest YouTubers doing. And I try not to do them myself. Although, I have in the past. So if you want to dig through the back catalogue, I'm sure you'll be able to pull me up. Nobody is ever obliged to talk to me on the grid or anywhere else for that matter. Oh, the humanity. Number 10, the dramatic mundane. You get a YouTuber that makes such a song and dance about what are in effect very mundane issues. And sometimes he blows them out of all proportion. It makes for good video, I suppose, but it's quite annoying, especially when it's coupled with one of the ones we get to later. You know, when YouTubers lie to us. Because they do that a lot as well. But Cameron here is an expert of the mundane. And I think he's got an issue with the word humanity because he uses it all the time going, oh, the humanity. When he really doesn't mean humanity. Here's some synonyms for humanity. And you can't replace what he said with any of them. And it still makes sense. Because it never made sense in the first place. So... I used to watch them, but it's just too much. It's too intense because the promise is there, but it never delivers. What are you saying, Martin? I, you weren't saying this before. There was no apology to Simone. There was no apology to Venus or Serena. Where was this uh, reticent humility in your approach to a Megan the Stallion, as an example? Number nine, the cinematic video. And we all know the kind, you know, it's, it's shot really well. It looks glorious, but what's it trying to tell us? And, and why do we have it? And Tommy here's a great example because Tommy's just started on YouTube according to his channel. And he's obviously been doing some research and he's been looking and watching other people. And he's thought, I'll do a cinematic video. Which then results in some really strange shots and as a viewer you're kind of detached from the whole thing it's maybe a bit like watching a movie yeah but that's not what youtube's about especially when it's a, basically a blog so yeah there's a time and a place for the cinematic video and it's probably not when you're just introducing your youtube channel and what you've done for the last week And number eight follows on from the cinematic video. And unfortunately, Tommy's getting the brunt of it again. This isn't maybe fair on Tommy because I actually quite like his video and what he's saying makes sense. But he's sitting in his car holding a road, which was actually going to be a separate category all on its own. But see people that hold road wireless mics. Why? You know, if you don't want to hold it and you don't want to see it, Clip it on somewhere and run a lav. But don't sit and hold a road wireless mic. It just looks completely naff. It's filming my journey, learning how to edit on a professional program like DaVinci Resolve and using cinema cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And that sort of aligns most with what I'm currently taking on as a solo content creator right now. But he's sitting in his car behind the steering wheel talking to the windscreen. And it's as if we are watching from outside the car. And it's like, who are you talking to, Tommy? Turn around and at least talk to the viewer. Because it's as if I'm listening in on a conversation that you're having with someone else. It's like, look at me. Look at me, Tommy. I want to hear what you're saying and see your mouth moving. But you're just sitting there talking to your windscreen. Don't talk to nobody. Don't wander off into the woods talking to nobody. There are some guys that do this kind of style, but do it really well, like um, like Casey from Camera Conspiracies. He does these kind of blogs to camera all the time, and he's really good. And he's engaging, but he's always talking to the camera because that's where you are. You're in the camera. So people need to talk to the camera. And if you don't feel up to talking to the camera, maybe you want to practice a wee bit more. But talk to your viewer. 
Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to review the one and only Pogo F2 Pro. Yes, battery life is amazing. Number seven, YouTubers that have the background music up way too loud and or inappropriate music. Because sometimes you'll be listening to something that sounds like there's maybe a, some kind of you know illicit pharmaceutical deal going down in the street outside with the big heavy beats. And you're thinking, why have we got this when we're trying to look at some kind of chill out or, or maybe even a tech review or something? And it's really, really annoying, you know, the don't, don't, don't. And by attaching the tuner to any of my lenses, it immediately gives those lenses a more filmic and vintage look. And I'm always... And it bears no relation to what people are saying. In fact, I've actually started to notice that a lot of videos now don't have a background music track. And I don't think it's a bad thing, because why bother? Why bother with a background music track if it's a piece to camera like this is? Does a background music track really enhance it? Are you so inattentive that you need background music when there's the slightest pause in my diction? Maybe. You're going to know exactly how the TikTok algorithm works and how to maximize the amount of sales that you're currently getting on TikTok right now. In fact, this business right here uses to gain over 200,000 followers. And then there's the other extreme, the other side of the coin. When there's no pause, no breath, this is number six. This is the guy that just keeps talking and can't take a breath and does, cuts all the spaces out and everything comes out in a constant string of verbal diarrhea. It runs into one another. The words just merge together. You end up exhausted from listening to this guy because... It's a conversation. You're having a conversation with the viewer. And in a conversation, you need to take a breath. You need to take a pause. And sometimes you want to, to just pause slightly for dramatic effect. But everybody on YouTube seems to think that if they pause for the slightest second, you're going to click away. And you might. You might. But if you're going to do that, you're going to do it anyway. So a constant stream of verbal diarrhea, as I've already said, isn't the way, in my view, to keep my attention. In fact, it tires me out. Maybe that's just because I'm old. Is we're just having a look at the custom picture profiles. So, um... How you doing, peeps? This is blood or not to blood. Just come in up to my next location. It's one. And then number five, the bugbear. Bad audio. This is the one that drives me nuts. I spend more time fixing and trying to produce videos that have good audio, not even great audio, just good audio, than anything else. Because audio will drive people away from you more than anything and quicker than anything. They'll put up with rubbish video. They'll put up with out-of-focus shots. They'll put up with blur. They'll even put up with quick cuts. But you've got to have good audio. And when you've got bad audio, it's like, why? Why would I even put myself through this? There's no point. So if you're going to concentrate on anything, concentrate on the audio. The visuals will come. I think that one spoke for itself. YouTubers that yell. Why do people feel they have to yell all the time? I'm trying to speak quite calmly and with some clarity. I might be struggling because I am Scottish and I'm sorry for that, but I'm not standing here yelling at the camera because what are you trying to what are you trying to convey? You're trying to convey that you're enthusiastic, that you know everything's great, you're we need to we need to jump on board and get hyped up with you. I mean well no, you just look silly. Don't do it. Just don't do it and don't offend my ears because 
Why? Why would you? YouTubers that lie, clickbait, thumbnails that have nothing to do with the content. And Formula One is one of the biggest offenders here. The Formula One channels that put up clickbait titles. For instance, the, the Adrian Newey doing a U-turn thing. Adrian Newey is not doing any kind of U-turn because he never said he was going to Ferrari at any point. Not at one point did he say he was going to Ferrari. So nobody's doing any kind of U-turn. It's just a desperate attempt to try and get you to click on the video. And you get to know these people and then you go, well, I'm not going to watch that, I'm not going to watch that, I'm not going to watch And you end up with two or three people that you can trust. And if you build a relationship with people that trust you, then they're going to keep coming back. But if you put up a clickbait title and somebody jumps in for the, the one or two views, you know, maybe by the time they've seen your third or fourth clickbait thumbnail, your blatant outright lie failing to deliver on the promise that you put there, then they're maybe going to go, hmm, I don't trust this guy. I don't think he's going to talk about what he said there. And if he is, it's actually not going to be what, it, what he purports it to be. So don't destroy the trust in your audience. Don't do it. It's not worth it for a click. Without further ado, guys, let's jump right into the video. Without further ado, let's get right into... What's up, insiders? I'm... And without any further ado, let's go and jump into this tutorial. Let's get into it. What is happening, good people of YouTube? This Number two. Without further ado... What does that actually mean? Well, it does mean without any more fuss. But that's not what these people mean. They mean, let's just get to the meat. But why? You're in the video. Why? You've started the preamble. Why not just roll on? Why say without further ado? It, it means nothing. It's like an emotional crutch now for people. And it really makes me, ang not angry, but it really makes me go, oh, for God's sake, move on. I mean, that's one of the guys in, this, in those clips gave us a without further ado twice in 45 seconds. <laughs> twice in 45 seconds. So which one are you not a doing? <laughs> it's just crazy. And then those, let's dive into the video. Let's dive in. Let's get into the meat. You know, hey, we're here to watch the video that you promised you were going to tell us in the thumbnail and the title. You've probably mentioned what you're going to tell us in the preamble. You don't need to tell me to dive in. I'm waiting on the content. If you don't tell me the content, I'm going to click away and I'm going to go and watch something else. So cut to the chase. Don't drag it round the houses. Just get right in there and get it done. I mean, if this was the top 10 and we were only on three, uh, only on seven, you'd be going, you're dragging this out a bit, aren't you? Yeah, I would be. And while I was making this video, there's so many other things I could have put in, so I might have to remake it with a top 20. But I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try and drag it out any further. Number one, and my biggest bugbear... As a third guy with you once again, and a bit of a, a saddening video this one to do, but it's Please subscribe for daily news updates that are actually relevant to you and follow us on social media. Welcome back. I am James and you're watching one of the best reaction channels on the internet. If you're into strange, creepy, mysterious videos, you are in the right place. But before we go on, let me ask you, please do subscribe to the channel with notifications on. Smash that like button and tell your dog. Asking for a like, a share and a subscribe at the beginning of the video. If I've not seen you before, why are you asking me to like something I've never watched? I'm not going to like, share and subscribe something if you ask me in the first five seconds. I probably won't even consider it if you ask me in the first two minutes. And I certainly won't be considering it if you keep ramming it in my face. And this is one of the things that me and my co-host have had a lot of 
antagonism against each other because he's he likes to get it out there. And I say, no, don't ask people to like something before you've had the product, before they can make up their mind. I mean, why would anyone do that? It really, really bugs me. And you know what? When people ask, they very rarely get in my book. Those that even don't ask, I mean, some people just say, don't subscribe now. And I'd be more inclined to subscribe to them than I would to people that ask me to subscribe. Maybe that's just me and my contrary nature. But certainly don't ask me, in some cases, within the first five seconds of the video. You can ask at the end, if you're nice, and you do it respectfully, that's fine. But don't ask me in the first minute. Don't ask me in the first two minutes. You can ask at the end the end, not the middle, the end. What do you think? Am I just being picky or do these things bug you as well?